Karlbach Kabbalat Shabbat month continues now. Welcome to Jewish Music Toronto. I am Ellie. Remember that all of our lesson and sing along videos are closed captioned, so if you want to follow along, all you have to do is click the CC button at the bottom of the YouTube player. Last week, we continued with the story of the life of Rabbi Shlomo Karlbach as we began Karlbach Kabbalat Shabbat month and learned his melody for Psalm 96, Shiru La Hashem. This week, we're pushing forward both in time regarding his life story, and with Kabbalat Shabbat, learning his melody for Psalm 98, Mizmur Shiru. We ended last week's life story portion with Rebbe Shlomo's rise in popularity, his travels to concerts, festivals, and other events around the world, and his rise to become the spiritual leader of the Kihilat Yaakov Shul in Manhattan after his father's passing. That was the late 1960s, and oop, silly me, it seems that I forgot to mention that his song, V'ha El Einenu, won the first place prize in the 1969 Hasidic Song Festival in Israel. Tack another big moment onto his chart of accomplishments in the 60s. Moving on to the 70s. Like the two decades before, the 1970s were an extremely busy time for Shlomo Karlbach. Already into his late 40s, he married his wife, Ne'ila, in 1972, and the Toronto connection grew. Though he still lived in Manhattan over the next few years and continued to travel regularly during that time, Ne'ila was from Toronto and was the sister of the now late award-winning Canadian composer Srul Irving Glick. In the mid-70s, his daughters Neshama and Nadara were born. As I've said before, I'd prefer to do a separate episode on Neshama as she's become a full-fledged artist in her own right. Also. I'm hoping that she'll come on as a guest in a future episode. And he established a moshav, or settlement, in Israel called Mevo Modi'im, where you'll find a number of American immigrants, including some from the original House of Love and Prayer, and the Shlomo Karlbach Foundation. Mevo Modi'im is also known as the Karlbach Moshav, and it was where he called home in the later years of his life. But we're not quite at those years yet. During all of this moving in the mid-70s, the Karlbach family officially moved to Toronto in 1978, and again, that Toronto connection I previously mentioned grew. Sadly, family life in Toronto did not last long, as he and Ila divorced in the early 1980s. Neila and the girls remained in Toronto, and Reb Shlomo continued to travel and perform regularly. He also continued to produce records quite frequently and work with Jewish youth organizations around the world, but specifically in Toronto. In the late 80s, while his daughters grew up, he continued to reach out to Jewish youth through song. And here in Toronto, in partnership with the founding members of NCSY, members of B'nai Torah, and Toronto's Nafshenu Orchestra, and others, he recorded a special tape. This tape was to be sent to Soviet Russia and to be distributed to the Russian Jewish underground into the hands of any Jew to whom they could get it. Jewish life in Russia at the time was not quite what you would call easy, and leaving wasn't quite an option either. So getting some kind of connection to the outside Jewish world, no matter how minute, was extremely important. Keeping them connected to Judaism, period, was extremely important. As the story goes, this tape was no ordinary song tape. Instead, each copy began with a few minutes of a generic recording not related to Judaism. Only a few minutes in did the words of Rabbi Shlomo Karlbach, translated and dubbed into Russian, begin filtering in, in stories, songs, and all. This was specifically done in the hopes of fooling Russian customs inspectors who would often check for cultural messaging that went against the government's messaging at the time. Actually, that doesn't sound too different from today from what I've heard. But the difference between then and now is that this trick probably wouldn't have worked with our current technology. Then you'd have to listen to whole tapes or sit for quite some time fast forwarding and stopping at random points to listen for dissenting messages. Now though, with digital files, you can just skip through tracks as you please. Just skip through tracks as you please. Karlbach Kabbalat Shabbat month continues. By late 1989, as restrictions began to loosen around Jews and immigration to Israel, etc., Reb Shlomo visited Russia, reaching out to Russian Jews and bringing them back into the fold. I cannot suggest enough to check out the links from the recorded sound archives below. They include the North American version of the album and cover and the making of the album. 
Between 1990 and 1994, Rebshlomo continued to perform around the world. His final tour before his death was in England in mid-October 1994. Just two days after the end of the tour, he passed of a heart attack while on his way to Toronto. Next week, as we finish with Karlbach Kabbalat Shabbat month, we'll continue with the lasting legacy of Rabbi Shlomo Karlbach. For now, we'll move on to the song. Psalm 98, Mizmor Shiru, is a psalm suggesting singing a new song to God. Wait, didn't we do that last week? Okay, yes, we did, but this song of praise is a bit different. It says the new song, whatever it ends up being, should be sung because of the wonders Hashem has done for the nation of Israel and the wonders that were done in the sight of all nations. Once we get into it, it begins to suggest how to sing this new song and what instruments to use, including the shofar, and how it will sound when this song is sung. It ends similarly to Psalm 96 as well, except that the earthly bodies that take joy in the future time of redemption are different from the ones mentioned before. Let's take a look at the lyrics. It begins, Mizmor shiru ladoshem shir chadash, ki niflaot asa, a psalm sing to Hashem a new song, because he has done wonders. Hoshio lo yimino uzro kodsho, hodia adoshem yeshuato. His right hand and his only arm have brought about salvation for him. Le'ene hagoyim gila tzidkato. To the eyes of the nation he revealed his righteousness. Zachar chasto ve'emunato levet Israel. He remembered his kindness, his belief in the house of Israel. Ra'u kol afsei aretz et Yeshuat elokeinu. Every end of the land has seen the salvation of our God. Hariu ladoshem kol haaretz pitzku viranu vizameru. Call out to Hashem, everyone on earth, burst out in song and praise and sing. And it goes on like this as well, adding in the things I mentioned before. By the way, if you'd prefer that I go through the complete lyrics in longer songs, let me know. I've been doing it because I thought it would be more interesting for you guys, but if you'd prefer for me to go through the complete lyrics, I'd be happy to. The melody goes... Mizmo shiru ledoshem shir chadash ki niflaot asa Hoshiyo lo yimino zrawa hokocho Hodiyu adoshem yeshuato Lehinei hagoim ki hilatikato Zachar chasdo vemunato leve Shofar Hariyu Lifne Hamelech Adoshem Ay 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 Iram Hayam Mumelo Tevel Biyoshve Bo Nerot Yimchahu Chaf Yachad Harim Yeraneinu Lifne Adoshem Kiva Lishpot Aret Yishbotevel betzedek ve'amim be'meisharim ay 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 na 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 ay for our sing-along to Shiru Lashem. Before I go today, I want to take a quick moment to thank Dan, one of our subscribers, for asking us to do something Kabbalah Shabbat related in the first place. 
His request inspired me to do Karba Kabbalat Shabbat month. So, thank you, Dan. As always, you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash jewishmusictoronto and on Tumblr at jewishmusicdatabase.tumblr.com. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.